Now we're going to have a look at the rig that caught the parrot, 63 pound carp. And I know it's a rig you've been using a lot, isn't it, Terry? You probably caught most of the fish out of uh, the crown whales on that one. I've been you? using it for years, pretty much everywhere I've been fishing. Yeah, yeah it's almost, yeah. Uh, I know it's a bottom bait rig, but confidence wise, it's sort of become a new hinge or choddy. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You know, it yeah. really, really is good. Uh, and as regards landing them as well. Yeah, you, you know, like you know, that was one of the reasons I always loved the hinge rigs and the pop-ups because mm -hmm. you landed 99% of what you hooked. Yeah. But and with bottom baits, just no not and you did drop the odd one. Yeah, yeah. Not anymore. Not fishing it like this. So let's go through it, sort of let's get technical with it and why right. you use it. Well basically you know. the actual hook link material is the loaded. Yeah, touch the um, loaded. Yeah, I like the green one. You know, mm -hmm. I pretty much use that on any bottom with the black flex. That's the semi-stiff, isn't it? That's yeah. it, semi-stiff, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Hook wise, and I use two different hooks with it. Yeah. If I can get away with it, then I do like the barber looks. Yes. They're very, very, they're thin in the wire. A lot of people, and I've shown them to mates, they go, oh, I'm not sure about that. Yeah. But, you know, if your tackle's balanced, mm -hmm. then I've had no problem with them whatsoever. In fact, right. I've just landed the, the, the parrot yeah. on one of these. Yeah. But, uh, you know, you have to use your red type thing. You know, mm. if it's weedy, summer and what have you, then I'd be on the cryogens. Yeah, like, you you know, grippers, yeah, 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 definitely. The grippers in the five, yeah, uh, all the sixes, but the five that's a real strong hook. You never mm -hmm. ever no. open that out, no matter how snaggy or weedy it yeah, is. But, um, yeah, for a finer presentation, they're lighter, mm -hmm. you know, some really, really suited to winter, um, very sharp, and I love them. Like, you know, those are what I've been using an awful lot. It's also, they're slightly longer in the shank, right, as well. But the rig just, just works so well with them, yeah. Um, you know, I use them with a boilies as, boilies as well as, as nuts, obviously, but with two tigers, and as soon as you tighten up to it, there they go. Yeah, it's just it doesn't matter in, what, you know, I think I've actually tied this rig with the cryogens, haven't I, on, on the ESP yeah. site. Yeah. But yeah, it's exactly the same. But even if I turn the hook up, you know, as, as soon as you tighten, yeah, it just it's, it's on, yeah, and, and they're not just, the good, the good thing is as well, the hook actually, as you tighten up, you can see that the hook actually writes itself. Yeah. Do you see what Stands I mean? Stands up. Yeah. yeah. So there's no shallow hook holds. You know mm. that's going in properly as the going to go in deep. Yeah. You've got right it right up to the bend, sort of thing. But yeah. I, I just, I was so confident with it. Yeah. Now you know I've been using it for, for so long. I just love it. Well, yeah. I mean, if you're confident in anything, it's good. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. yeah confidence is a big thing, isn't it? So, so you've got two tigers on there on a yep. fairly long hair, haven't you? Yeah. Yeah. I tend to have the hair at about you know eight, eight, nine mil type thing. Yeah, you know. Separation. Um, and you got the, the traps with silicon right on the yeah I know. sort of right a lot of people of use bend. a little ring, don't they? And they have yeah. it sort of, but I prefer it to go right round, so I trap it with a little bit of silicon. Okay. And do you find nine times out of ten when you run up the fish, that's been blown back? Round? Always. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Always. Yeah, yeah. Always. Yeah. You know, years ago, going back to the car park lake sort of times, mm. like um, I used a similar version of this this rig then. It's uh, if you imagine no knotting. Yeah. No knotting, but actually no knotting with a loop, a loop. Okay. So you have to, yeah. you were left with a big loop, and then you used to tie a knot on it and basically sort of grip it there. But the, you almost used to trap the hair. The, the hair wasn't going through the silicon. The silicon was just stopping it from bumping back. But you know yeah. it was awkward on the cast and all right. that. You know it was yeah. all right for in the edge, but it was really obvious how effective it was, how much mm -hmm. it helped spin the rig. Yeah. And then I remember I stopped using that. I actually done a little video for it for Sky at Hunt's Corner and caught right. one on it. I remember oh, it, okay. and that was with the G4s. That's yeah, how long yeah, I'm going that's back. A long time ago. Yeah, 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 I mean, you didn't need, I didn't use shrink tubing on it. It was right. they had the interned eye. Yeah. But yeah, that was the same principle. Mm -hmm. And then there was a gap, and I can remember old Joe from Carp TV. Yeah. It was probably when he was working for Corda, but right. he sent me through um, some rigs on a board. Mate, I've been using this, what do you reckon on this? Yeah. And it was basically this, but he didn't have no shrink tubing on. Okay. Um, it, you know, and it does still turn, but yeah, obviously yeah. with shrink tubing it makes it even more yeah, effective, yeah. like, you know. But yeah, it was like that. And whereas I always used to be bothered, I always used to be worried about that little bit of braid cutting across, yeah. thinking maybe it'd hinder it. But of course it doesn't, no. you know, it slides straight out of yeah, the way. that's right. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I found, I found that interesting. When Joe sent them for, I thought, mm, you know, there is something on that. We already, yeah. me and Ev were on this. As well. So I went back to it and sort of, probably since about 2005, and ever since then, I've that's been my bottom bait rig. Yeah. Now, have you sort of fine tuned the length of that shrink tube over a period of time? Yes. Is that, and the yes. angle and everything? Yes, and, uh, and it does vary. Like with the uh, grippers, for instance, I tend to go a little bit shorter on it. 
because not, of the not beak quite point. As long. You got it because it's mm. got a beak point. Yeah, mm. uh, a little bit shorter on the tubing and not so aggressive on the angle. Right. You know, a bit a bit more open on yeah. the angle. I guess because right. that's the beak point sort of is slightly closed, not closing up the gate, but I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah. When you've got tubing on, you're making that gate slightly smaller. Whatever, whatever hook yeah. you use, once you've set it up, tinker with it, play yeah, with it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? You might you might find that the uh, that the tubing's better a little bit further back. Right. Or it might be better even further round, mm -hmm. like, you know. And another thing, which is one of the reasons I shave a little bit edges off the nuts, even that can make the difference. I've had right. it where I'm playing with rig and I think it's just not turning quite as well as, as I want. Right. And then I shake you and then you look at it and you think mm, that nut's not quite central and you just shave a little bit yeah, off one yeah. side and bang and then it's turning right. right. <laughs> to be fussy, you know, it yeah. does pay off. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Every little one percent you, you, you want. Those nuts like a counterbalance, aren't they? It's just yeah. like sort of, you know, that separation. It's making it more difficult. They're dragging along the bottom of the fish's mouth or whatever. And yeah, just and like, round. Oh, yeah. Keeping them that sort of yeah, shape, yeah. that is a lot of it. Obviously, it's nice to have a misshaped bait, but mm. a rig is most efficient when they're round. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah. And what sort of length hinge do you have above the um, shrink tube before you, before you got the you know, the coated bit? About a centimetre. Right. Yeah. And you found that yeah, about that's optimal. probably you know it, it can vary from it, and as long as it's five mil to twelve mil right. sort of size, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that's the other thing actually. When I shrink down that shrink tube in, I don't do it by steam, I actually dip it yeah, into do. the kettle yeah, yeah. and yeah. that has the added, it, it also melts any waxy right. stiffness to the braid, do you know what yeah. I mean? So it makes that so bit very, very up. supple. Yeah, yeah, it's ever so supple, which is important, it just yeah. helps the hook turn. Yeah. But it doesn't matter how many times I do that, it's going to have me... Yeah, it's going to get you every yeah. time, innit? And is that the sort of length you generally use with that rig? What's yes. that, about seven, eight inches? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I've gone shorter and then I've gone back again, you mm. know, but that's that's the length. Yeah. If maybe a touch shorter sometimes, like, you know. Is 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 that the sort of a ratio you've come to in terms of how the fish are feeding and picking up and moving? Or? Just going from hook holds when I've caught fish and they're all yeah. nailed, you know, that's that's, that's a length that just seems to work right. well. Um, you know, because you imagine a, a normal rig where you've just no knotted, obviously mm -hmm. the hook's a lot tighter to the hair, do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. So I feel like I need to keep, give, them, give them a little bit of rope to yeah. hang yourself and get the hook in their mouth. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, especially on the big fish. Yeah. 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 Works a treat, mate. So that's sort of the rig taken care of. What sort of presentation do you generally use, uh, like bait, bait around, wise, well, around it and what the, have you? Obviously it varies, you know, I can use mm. that with, with anything, with, with yeah. boilies, peanuts, whatever, whatever mm. I want. Um, in the case of over there, uh, with the parrot, basically I'd drop, drop that in, and then mm -hmm. I'd have half a dozen nuts around it, um, a ha little handful of emp. Yeah. Uh, I've got a super maze, which is a little bit special. Yeah, so you make that yourself, do yeah, you? Yeah, yourself, yeah, that's a few it. Bits so, to it. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> a few magical little ingredients. <laughs> but yeah, that's the soup. We can see how well split it yeah, is as well. Yeah, it's yeah. very, very, you know, it soaks up anything that I add yeah, to it. Yeah. So, uh, and in winter, in cold water, that's really important. There's so much proper attraction mm. leaking into the water. Yeah, yeah. Uh, really, really good. A little bit of corn. Right. You know? But yeah. again, no more than that. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, obviously, you know, most places you're going to be casting. Do you yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Over there, it, it's it's with a boat, so mm. it's very, very easy to just. I can have a dozen grains around it, and it is around it. It's right yeah, around yeah, the rod. Yeah. You know, so yeah. I don't need to use a lot. Mm. But that that much, about twice as much as that of the maize. Right. Two handfuls of em, and then I chew up a few tiger nuts. And you were saying um, that earlier, you, you literally put them in your mouth and chew them up. Quite literally, yeah, yeah. I've done mm. every. You know, I've used the grinders, the crushers, and all the mm. rest of it. Um, Apart from hurting your hands, like they're very, yeah. you know, tigers ain't, aren't so easy to, to crunch hard, up. Yeah. But you just don't get the same, you know, they don't look quite as quite as good. And all the yeah. time I'm aware, you know, I'm smashing my teeth up here, do you know what I mean? Chewing mm. up tigers. I worked out, I probably chewed up about 20 jars of tigers through the, through that yeah, window. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not good, you know? Yeah. But um, yeah, my dentist is not, not too happy. But I know, I mean, you're you, over there you're using a boat and a few people have sort of said, oh, he's using a bait boat. But uh, having seen you use a boat, you've got that down to a fine There's art. There's well, an as art to it. Yeah, just like, yeah. I mean, you know, we're sat on a, this isn't my boat, by the way, this one's the bailiff's boat. <laughs> but uh, yeah, just like sat on, you know, using, yeah. a, using a hard boat. There's an art to it. Yeah. And, uh, you know, with the remote boat, um, you know, half of the anglers that I've seen, you know, bless them, everyone's got their own way, you know, whatever works for you. But I've seen so many with the rod on the rest. 
and an yeah. open bay alarm and then they get their spot and then they just drop in. Drop in, in you a know, heap. And it's just no yeah. good. Yeah, there's a very high chance of, especially if you've got a leader on, which mm. we nearly all, all of us have, yeah. and the hook link will just spin around the leader yeah, on the yeah. way down, you know? Yeah. But not only that, you haven't actually felt for a drop. You're, you've got the, the basically the remote control in one hand, the boat remote, and the rod in the other hand. And when when you're, I think you said when you when you release when you drop the boat, I'll actually, you feel for the drop yeah. like you would when you're casting. Everything's set up, boats yeah. in the water, the rigs in it, and everything. And then and then I've got the control, up, the handset, and I'm holding the rod in in my yeah. other hand yeah. always. And uh, and that way I'm correcting the line as it's going yeah. out. Sometimes you're going out of a big wind, mm -hmm. you know, under toes, everything, but you're correcting the line. Yeah. Um, and then when I drop, I get everything so it's right. I know exactly I, I, I'm going to drop and I'll get the rod to the side. Yeah. The deeper it is, the further back it needs to go because mm -hmm. you don't want to, the rig swinging back. No. You know, it's not spot. like a marker float where mm. you're casting beyond it and then yeah, sinking yeah, on yeah. a tight line. You know, you, you're dropping bait as well. So it mm -hmm. needs to go down straight. That's or it. I guess yeah. a lot of the time, if I was in 10 foot, I might come back that much, you know, just because right. you're sinking on a tight line. But follow the lead. Yes. You know what I mean? Yeah. But yeah, follow it through. Bonk. And what I tend to do is uh, the hopper that's got the rig in, I put very, very small amount of bait next yeah. to nothing. And if I and, the, and the, the bulk of the free offerings go in the other hopper. Yeah. And then if I don't get the drop that I want, then I reel it in. No difference to if don't I was casting. And it doesn't matter if it's mm. 150 yards out, I will yeah. reel it in every right. time. Like, yeah. you know, yeah. you've got to get that drop. Yeah. Um, and obviously, if you do get the drop that you want, donk, lovely light, then release the other hopper as well. Job yeah. done. And the bait stand straight yeah. on top of it. Yeah, yeah. perfect, Brilliant. perfect. So that's the rig that caught the parrot for Terry and all pretty much all the other fish he's caught out of here and a little bit of a bait boat masterclass there as well. Thanks very much, Tell. No worries, mate.